Welcome gamers and tech enthusiasts. We have been waiting for this day for years. 4K 32 inch OLED monitors are here and some of us are now looking to upgrade. When it comes to the 4K monitors, the best option on the market is undoubtedly OLED. OLED technology has revolutionized the display industry with its ability to produce vibrant colors, deep blacks and incredible contrast. However, until now, we haven't had access to the 32 inch 4K OLED displays. With so many options releasing in 2024, it can be overwhelming to choose the right 4K OLED monitor. So I've spent some time collecting some specs for you and for what I call the top four 4K OLED monitors for 2024. So here we go. The 32 inch OLED monitors I have chosen today are the MSI MPG 321URX, the LG 32GS95UE, the Asus PG 32UCDM, and finally, the Alienware AW3225QF. Let's start with price then. The MSI comes in at just under $950 in the US and £1,300 in the UK. The Alienware comes in at just under $1,200 in the US and just under £1,000 in the UK. The prices are yet to be released for the LG and the Asus, but from what I've seen online, we could be paying up to $1,500 for either of those. Will it be worth it though? Let's find out more. Panel types then. The LG uses WOLED tech, which has been updated for this year's model and much improves overall brightness and tech clarity, whereas the other three monitors use next-gen QD OLED tech. This is also improved since the last gen, but not enough testing has taken place yet to determine which panel offers the best performance, so we will have to wait and see for that. Size and refresh rate and all monitors here are 32 inches and all come with 240Hz 4K resolution, but one monitor has a trick up its sleeve. The LG comes with dual hertz function, which means you can switch between 4K 240Hz and 1080p 480Hz. This is also VESA verified too. A very cool trick, but is it something you will use? I'm sure competitive console and PC players will be interested in this monitor. Response times, and all monitors come with 0.03 grey to grey response times. And if you've seen the reviews on OLED monitors in the past, this has always been a true reflection of the sheer power OLED packs behind it. Brightness, and it seems on paper that all these monitors hit 250 nits on standard definition, with a recent review from the display guy saying that the LG comes out slightly brighter than the other monitors. HDR is what these monitors are designed for though, and they all support HDR 400 True Black, with a peak brightness of all these monitors hitting at least 1000 nits, although this will need testing once all monitors are fully released. Only the Asus and the Alienware show Dolby Vision and HDR10 support. All panels come with 10-bit color and 98.5% DCI-P3, although when I did look at the specs on the Alienware, it was advertised at 99.3 DCI-P3. But would that make a difference to you? Although all the monitors come with adaptive sync, the MSI doesn't advertise or show G-Sync or FreeSync compatibility. Whereas the LG, Asus and Alienware all come with FreeSync Premium Pro and G-Sync compatibility. VRR and ALLM is all available on all monitors too. Connections and all the monitors today come with 2 times HDMI 2.1 ports, but only the MSI and the Asus advertise full 48 megabits per second bandwidth. The Alienware comes with eARC Dolby Atmos pass-through though, and they all come with 1 times DP 1.4 with DSC connection. All the monitors have USB-A inputs and Type-C. The MSI and Asus show 90 watt charging capability for laptop use, but the Alienware only has a 15 watt charge capability. With the LG not advertised at all, this puts it on the back foot. 3.5 millimeter headphone outputs are not available on the Alienware, but available on the rest. The Asus advertise SPDIF digital output which could be handy for some. Let's move on now to things that could turn you on or off. Firstly, the Curve. The Alienware is the only model here that comes with a 1700R Curve screen, which could help you decide whether this monitor is good for you. Basic Clear Motion. MSI has made a point of advertising MR1300 Clear Motion. This is VESA's new standard for greater grey response time and aims to limit the artificial enhancements you normally see on other monitors so consumers can make a more fair comparison of motion blur qualities at a display's natural limits. This could be the only monitor officially VESA verified. KVM switch. If you have multiple computers connected to your computer, then from what I've found, the only monitors to offer this is the MSI and the Asus. 
This feature allows you to use one set of peripherals like one mouse and one keyboard for two computers. Built-in speakers. The only monitor to offer built-in speakers is the LG. The panel emits audio directly from the panel and from what I've heard, it is great. None of the other monitors offer inbuilt speakers, which for 2024 is not really acceptable in my opinion, especially if you're a console gamer. One of the issues we might have is the matte finish on the LG. Uh, the others have an anti-reflective film on them, like a glossy sort of coating, like normal QD OLEDs, but LG has a matte finish, so bear that in mind. Cooling next, and something that could turn you off with the Alienware is the cooling fan that is installed. From reviews that I've seen so far, it may not be loud now, but it could get louder with age. Other monitors use different passive cooling methods, like heat sinks and graphene film, which are completely silent. Next up, Warranty, I just want to say thank you to the community for pointing this change out for me. Literally within the last few days, Asus have put out that they give out a three year burning warranty now. So the only monitor here not to give a three year burning warranty is the LG. Last bits then, and all the monitors have 100 by 100 vase amounts. All have some type of OLED care built into the menu and with much reduced auto brightness limiters too. This combination will ensure the panel lasts long while keeping the best picture. Game crosshairs and game support settings will be available on all but the LG. I couldn't see any info advertised for that monitor. Release dates in conclusion then. The MSI and Alienware is released now in the UK and the US and the LG and the Asus should be released later in Q1, although I could see this being extended. So based on the specs of these monitors, it seems that the Alienware could be the best deal for UK buyers, whereas the MSI may be the best value for the US buyers, but if money was no object, then which one would you buy? I have one of these monitors due for delivery very shortly, and will do a comparison with my 4K Samsung Neo G8 240Hz panel. I've never been so excited, look out for the review soon. If you enjoyed this video, please sub, comment, like. Thank you for watching everyone and see you again soon.